bunch of people are going to show up in hazmat suits. You will be on the news, and they will kill all of your chickens. Hey guys, my name is Dan. I'm a veterinarian, and today I have my wife Jordan here. Hi, my name is Jordan, and I'm not a veterinarian. <laughs> we do have a bunch of chickens, and today we're going to talk about avian influenza or the bird flu or H5N1. She's going to give her opinion on it. I'm going to give mine, and hopefully it helps you guys to establish your opinion on how you want to manage your flock. You guys probably noticed in the news a lot of birds have been dying, unfortunately. We're talking tens of millions of birds mostly chickens and ducks. Uh, of course, there's a lot of wildlife that are dying too, but the ones that are being documented are gonna be the commercial poultry, that's the majority of it, and then your backyard as well. You probably saw, I think it's 99,000. Yeah, ducks were just euthanized because of it. What state was that in? So I think that you see the more medical side of things, but I also, but I see more of like the, the like what it's like to have like backyard chickens, like pets side of things. I'm seeing some of these things pop up on Facebook about the avian flu and people are like laughing at it and saying it's like a conspiracy and I have a hard time because I'm married to you and so I know that <laughs> I know I'm hearing all these things from you but I'm on the crunchier side of things and um, and I'm like well is this is this a real thing but chickens are dying and so it's like do we report this to the government and have them come in and like kill your flock or like what what would you do in the situation as like a professional so this this gets pretty dicey because we're dealing, so the commercial guys, like if they have an outbreak, it's very pathogenic. So if you have avian influenza, the new H5N1, mm -hmm. that is devastating. You will, these commercial guys and gals will have um, hundreds, if not thousands of birds dying like overnight. It, okay. is, it is quick. Now the, the big issue here is also, What's spreading it is your is your wild fowl. So like your ducks, your geese, and they're coming in and they're mingling with some of these other birds that are commercial, okay. like your chickens and your ducks. And what's happening is we have a lot more of these birds that are free range. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the food can be shared with the wildlife sometimes. So you, I saw that one in um, that case in in Chicago, I believe. Okay. The the commercial. It's a smaller. It's a smaller like mom and pop, but they have like thousands of birds and they said yeah we know there is some contamination with like the geese that are migrating so how did how did they know that did they just have like like birds I, I think die? i think they had like eyes on the ground like like feet on the ground they were looking and they were like oh my gosh all this feed these wildlife birds are like touching it and in contact so well, let me back up for one second okay. with with the spread of this how is it being spread so it's tough because it's not being spread human to human. Like different MDs and human doctors are gonna talk about if and when and possibly and could it be, but out of the 67 cases we've seen so far, none of it has been human to human. It is okay. all, it is all either raw milk, which we'll get to later if you guys want to, okay. raw milk, or it is gonna be direct contact with your flock. Okay. So pooping, dander in the air, all that like primary contact. And these viruses can live in the environment for quite a while. Well, and let me just tell you, these people that <laughs> are not happy about the government coming in and killing their flock, they're also not gonna be happy about your raw milk comments. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. So, um, uh, you know, anyone that doesn't, so here's, if you have like 10 chickens in your backyard and they're your babies, mm -hmm. like this is a paradigm shift. And we were driving home from church today talking about this, and it's definitely a change in how we look at stuff. Sure. Because we have, we have a cat walking around right now in, in our little studio here. And cats and dogs, if they got sick, we would do everything possible to make them better, just like a human, so to speak. Yeah. But birds, they have been food animals forever. And um, that's the way they've been seen. And if you have an outbreak, and we're trying to control the outbreak, and we're trying to control them from spreading it to wildlife, that would then spread it with migration patterns. If we're trying to stop the problem, the government wants to come in and cull or euthanize everything. Put the fire out. It's like if there's a fire, they want to put it out and then say it's not going to spread anywhere else instead of trying to manage it. Okay. That makes sense. So, so are there things that we can do to manage it if we get, like have like a small backyard flock, kind of like what we have? Yeah. Um, could what 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 is, would be the medical treatment for that? 
Well, here's the deal. Like, it's a virus. So you're dealing with a flu. And it's a unique flu. Remember, guys, flus are... It's a different envelope virus for each flu. So you, when they label these, it sounds complicated, but it's really not. So you have an H and an N. So they call this one H5N1. Okay. And there's all kinds of bird flus. There's human flus. There's uh, swine. There's all kinds of flus. And flus are made up, a lot of times they're made up by pigs. They're like the mixing pot for flus. But flus can definitely be started and started commonly in birds. And this flu virus is unique to birds. So it's going to kill birds pretty quick and easily. In humans, not near as likely. More likely some just mild symptoms. But I think the thing that we, we need to think about prevention. Okay. Because if you have a backyard flock of like 10 birds, in this time period of this outbreak going on, you really should be locking those birds down so they have no exposure to wild birds we'll just say wild birds because okay. it's the poop it's the direct contact it's sharing food it has to be that like primary contact right there because um they're not they're not going to get it any other way so if we can just stop this contact with wild fowl you're gonna prevent the problem from happening and if if it does get in your flock here's the deal two things i'm worried about one the birds are going to die fast they're going to die really fast and two um, you could get sick. Sure. Yeah. It's a, it's a public, it's a public health issue. So like if, if, what would you say if like we just went into our chicken coop one morning and like one of our chickens <laughs> was just like dead in the corner? Like what, what would your immediate like? If, if I had other outside circumstances, like I'm going to reference the situation in, um, in Chicago, they thought that it was from the cold. Okay. They found uh, like one or two dead. And then I believe. And then uh, they found hundreds dead by the end of the day. Okay. It depends on the situation, guys. So if there's nothing else going on and you have multiple birds die, that should be checked out. Because um, it's, it's your safety, too. Um, I mean, one person has died from it, and it's not likely, but um, it would be, it would just be a tragedy to know that you could have prevented this problem in your in your human house. Okay, so another thing that I'm seeing in these groups is that, like, um, like if you're suspicious that you might have this, like you've had a couple of chickens die, like you should just go take them to your local veterinarian, and then they'll do some testing for <laughs> you, and then the government won't come in and just kill all your chickens. I hate to say it, guys. That's incredibly ignorant mm, it's poppycock so i am a cat and dog veterinarian and that's predominantly what i do can i dabble with other animals i totally can but like most veterinarians i am aphis accredited meaning that i take some ce or continue education classes every two years and if there is an outbreak and i diagnose something guess what i am required to report that so if you come into me, a cat and dog vet, and you're like, hey, Dr. Dan, could you run this test for me? And I run it. I'm happy to run it. Two things will probably happen. One, as your veterinarian, I am going to report that to APHIS. Not only because I'm worried about your little flock. If it was only about your little flock, I'd be less concerned. But I'm worried about you staying healthy. Okay. And I'm worried about spreading it. Okay. Because if your flock is running around the entire neighborhood – it is a giant reservoir for continued spread. And then basically your flock is killing other birds. Yeah. And that's not fair. Okay, so you take your chickens to the vet. Yep. They're tested. They have this. Yep. They're just SOL after they're this. They're done. They're done. I'm sorry. They're <laughs> that's done. That's what you're saying. A bunch of people are going to show up in hazmat suits. You will be on the news and they will kill all of your chickens. Mm. Yeah. That's exactly what will happen. And uh, it'll be quick, probably the same day. And yes. it'll be like the movies, like E.T. Like they, <laughs> they, they walk okay. in. <laughs> okay, this is really sad, but E.T.'s a great movie. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry, guys. I mean, um, it's a public health concern. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think if, if people could not get sick from it, and if the chicken was um, an, um, an end like it wasn't a reservoir for continued spread. Yeah. If it stopped with the chicken, like some, some viruses will just stop with certain species. They can't go any farther. If it was only like we're worried about your, your, 
your coop, your your chickens are gonna pass. I think people would have a lot more flexibility with it. But when it, when it comes to the government and APHIS and human health, that's huge. Human health is number one. Um, they will definitely put a stop to any positive. So if you do go in and get it checked out, let's be honest, guys. If you have, if it's like 30 below and one chicken dies, they, those kind of things happen. Like that is extreme situations. If you have like an old chicken or other things like that, and you're, and we've been, sl we've been, we've been sluggish for a while. This is gonna kill a chicken fast. Okay. And if you have multiple chickens die, that's when I really start to get worried. Multiple chickens. Okay. Because with how with how aggressive this is, how quickly it, chickens pass away from it, um, more than one I'd be testing. Okay. Yep. So. Yeah. And if you're worried, I mean, get t test at one. That's, that's, that's best practice. But more than 100%. So besides, like, lock, like, keeping your chickens, like, in their coop or in, like, a run, like, away from, like, wildlife, um, is there, like, a natural way that we can um, be preventing this other than, like, keeping the food separated? Is there, like, a supplement or, like, some yoga poses <laughs> that we should be doing with our hands yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah, keep them? Yeah. In I, top shape. To my knowledge, no. Okay. Um, I would work on isolation, which sounds horrible, but it's only for a short period of time, and the chickens don't mind. If you give them awesome food, great clean water, a beautiful place to nest and roost, um, they're going to be so happy. Okay. So um, do that, and then um, making sure that, like, you keep that coop clean and uh, – you're just not allowing for any contamination into the coop. Okay. Because, like, here's the deal, guys. Like, let's say you have a bunch of geese that come through your neck of the woods, and you have your cowboy boots on, and you walk right through all that geese poop in the chin coop. You just contaminate your coop, and that could definitely spread it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's all really good information. Hey, that you're thinking of? I'm trying to think right now. It's just, I just wish that there was, like, an essential oil <laughs> that we... <laughs> That we could like diffuse in their coop. <laughs> <laughs> Just hook up those oils and, and let it pump. Yep. Yeah. So sorry for all you crunchy chicken oh, mommies. Oh, hey, out there. hey, one more thing, guys. Uh, you probably heard about raw cow milk. Um, I have always been against raw cow milk. I don't like it. I know it, it carries a lot of disease. Um, we do believe that like people that are raised on raw cow milk do quite fine with it, actually. Okay. But if you are um, in the city and one day you decide you want to do raw cow milk, you are more predisposed to having problems with right. it. With that being said, um, cows can definitely carry the disease and you can get the virus from raw cow milk because if you just if you just pasteurize it that will kill the envelope virus so if you are a raw cow milk drinker which i don't like already i apologize i would definitely put it on pause at least until we can get rid of this virus yep or reduce its presence yep cheers Bing. <laughs>